Um, but my Rambo 3, unfortunately, is... Well, now it's... I'm actually doing that. I'm working on that one now. It's going to be up on the 25th for the uh, 20... I think 27-year anniversary of Rambo 3. Um, and that one has a lot in it. Like, that's a good three hours. Um, I also did uh, Cobra, the second annual Cobra cast. So that one's that one has a lot of information on blood in it as well. Me and Isaiah were were talking a lot, of, a really great conversation. I actually listened to it last night, um, and I was like, "Wow, we had a really good conversation." I had a musical guest on too for Cobra Cast, and um, so, so, um, when they do their Cobra uh, Slycast, is it like video? What we're doing now? Is it just like it's audio? Range? I think so, it's audio. Just audio. Yeah. yeah. And the big, the next big one is on the twenty second, which is in a couple of days. Um, is that just like a couple of guys just talking to people, and that's it, or is it like an official? Well, story? when they start, this is it, it, this this podcast of theirs is genius. When they started out, they were um, the three of them, yeah, Jeff, Jeff, and Craig, and they would cut. Co they cover Sly movies in chronological order. Plus, they'll do, like, you know, like, Sly's appearances on TV, in commercials, in this and that. And they made this awesome, awesome chronological order. Uh, and uh, they're still going. I think now they're in, they just hit 1990, right? So now they're going to be looking over the next, you know, year, they're going to be looking at 90 to 2000, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. That's sort of the formula, I gather, that they're, they're running it. And uh, I believe I was their first guest. And then I wanted, to, I wanted to talk about the Rambo first blood, the, the fan edit cut. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. can they go back to eighty-two or not? Yeah, I think so. Because I like I said they just did. They just did uh, Rocky. They're getting ready for Rocky Five now, right? They had Mike Hunter on, and they did Rocky One to Four. Yeah. And they already did Rocky One to Four, right? So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they'll, 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 you can discuss that. Because I, I tweeted them and said, like, you know, I've done fan edits, like, just said 20, 30 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. and I said, you know, if you don't believe me, ask you, because mm -hmm. you've got to cut the first blood and the TV version. Um, and they said, well, how do you know it's your cut? I said, well, because I know, because I've put it together. Mm -hmm. um, I said, if you don't believe me, I'll send, send it to you if you want. Mm -hmm. But they said, oh, my mate's in, um, away in Broad or something, or he's coming back from holiday or something. And he, mm -hmm. it was pretty but I've heard no messages at all. Whether or not there's someone out there who's like saying, yeah, I've done a cut of it, Rock, uh, Rocky Five and the first blood, and they said it's theirs, which is bollocks, because it's my cut, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. It's, but you know what? Uh, it's good timing, because when, when you're on for that show, on the first... On the first of June, uh, first blood's being reissued, so it's good timing, you know. Reissued what DVD? No, the uh, original. We're gonna get the original version of First Blood by David Morrell. Was it? What I don't understand. Uh, the like, uh, like the book First Blood. Oh yeah, yeah. With um um, the original first chapter. I'm not sure if that chapter is a prequel chapter. Or what? But it's uh, it, it, the original first chapter is going to be in there, which we, no one has ever seen, and it's going to come with a big poster of Kirk Douglas's Troutman, and uh, what else is in there? Liner, all the liner notes, all the um, photography of where it was supposed to take place in North Carolina. It, it's a, it, it's like a huge book coming out, man, like a huge. You, you got a link to uh, where to buy it. Or pre-order it. Um, yeah, good. That really good. Story. Yeah, I'll send you that. I hope it's not sold out. I bought mine when it went online. Like the the pre-order went online. Mine's going to Connecticut actually, and then it's and then it's uh, coming here because I had to have it delivered to the states. Um, let's see here. It's on Gauntlet Press. How much is it? Page. The one I bought was two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars, shit. But it was a 
There was only... The one I got, there was only 50 of them in existence. Did you get it signed as well? Yeah. Oh, right. That's, well, that's worth the money then. Yeah. Damn. It's on this page somewhere. Uh, right, I'll look at that. My phone's gone ding. So that yeah. must be the message. But yeah, like the next, uh, the next big uh, thing I'm doing is uh, the anniversary of First Blood Part Two. Let me tell you, that was crazy to record because last year I covered like, I, like last year we went into, into overtime, so I had to kind of push it back a couple of months. I didn't get to do it on the anniversary, but we did like the whole history of First Blood Part Two. I had David Morell on the show to talk yeah. about the reissue of First Blood Part Two. The novel, the novelization, Rambo of the Apes. I did the Rambo of the Apes review, the um, the the Kindle, all the different versions, the essay, and everything. But I didn't get enough time to properly do James Cameron's one. What? So this year I'm doing James Cameron's, and uh, literally, I sat here. I did it in three shots. The first one I did an hour. The second one I did an hour, and the last one I did two hours. I sat here. And I read the whole James Cameron script to the audience. And that, that is amazing. Like, I forgot how good that script was. So what's the difference between David Morrell, the version we know, to James Cameron's? Um, there's a couple of variations as you go through from Cameron's to Morrell's to Stallone's. Yeah. But James Cameron's is like the prototype. It's the original vision of what they wanted to do for the sequel. So there's stuff in there like um, uh, Ko has a son named uh -huh. Nguyen who's w living with her brother in California. And there's some jokes, you know, like she's all worried about the kid being gone. But Rambo's like, uh, oh, don't worry. He's probably on the beach. He's got a surfboard. And she's like, what's a surfboard? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And then uh, Rambo and Ko get engaged. Oh, Which is another yeah. thing that wasn't in there. There's a little bit of um, a scene where, like, Rambo's setting traps before Ko gets killed. She gets killed by an actual uh, Black & Decker minigun instead. Off that, Yushin kills her. Yeah. And then, um, but, like, Rambo sets up, like, a trap on the bridge, so all the, all the soldiers are running across the bridge to get Rambo, and the whole fucking bridge goes up. They all fall into the, into the ravine. Ah! <laughs> And then, like, instead of Rambo burying Ko, there's, like, a big stone, like, one of the big stone Buddhas, and Rambo, only half of her body's left. And Rambo puts, like, the remaining pieces of her in the, in the hands of the Buddha. And while he's doing that, the bad guys are coming, right? So all the bad guys are shooting at him, and he's, like, ignoring him. But there's, like, bullets going by around him, explosions, and he's just, like, laying her down, taking his time takes off her medallion, puts it on, turns around, and boom! <laughs> it's on. Mm -hmm. Also, like, he's, um, he's in camouflage a lot, uh, which is something that we're actually using for blood. Um, and he has a sidekick. He has a John Travolta with him, which is not in uh, the other one. Agent Brewer. Um... Like I'm trying to really, really look for that. Um, they did actually film it. Do you know the death of Cobell? She gets killed in number two, like we know, and he's in the mud. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. I've seen a picture, a really, really small picture, of, uh, of him going like, no, like, you know, crying yeah. out, ah, like the back of him, like, his hands up like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to find that picture, or, because I'm sure they filmed it, because if they did film it, then that picture wouldn't exist. Yeah. And there's a bit where... She dies and he's like, like the back of like, nah, like, you know, screaming out or like. Mm -hmm. So I, I could not find that. I saw it ages and ages ago on Google Images, mm -hmm. but I can't find it at all. So yeah. If that picture exists and that footage exists and I can't find it at all. Well, the documentary I sent you, they talk about it in the documentary. So they, there might be, I'm not sure, but there might be like an image in there or something. It's on Is documentary it, uh, two. That'd be really good if I could find that footage, but whether or not they just like took a picture and left it in the storage room where they uh, the deleted scenes are, I don't mm -hmm. know. It's a bit like when I said to you about First Blood, where 
Um, it walks back into town. You're supposed to go to the cafe and get a drink and all that, and then it gets kicked out of the, the bar. Mm -hmm. Like, that says it on IMDB, like the late scenes and stuff, that it gets kicked out of the bar and then the sheriff comes after him. And, well, do you know when he's coming into town, he says, oh, don't push me, why'd you push me? He pulls up and goes and gets a, a coffee or something. Yeah. I think it's before that, then the, the sheriff picks him up and then drives him back to the bridge. Like, that scene don't exist. I haven't seen it, but on in the movie database, it says that scene was in the TV version, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, like, I asked David about that, and he said that they don't, they never, he, not to his recollection, that he didn't have any recollection of them filming that. It's funny you bring that up, though, because, um, there's another passage from around that time in the book that I, I made a reference to in the fan film. Um, mm -hmm. until we get everything sorted out with filming in Ontario, we're starting to film things here. Actually, we've already started filming things here. Um, and one of the, we're doing the whole middle part of the script first because that's like um, Rambo's time in, in the hole, in, in prison for six months with the VC. And we wanted to really show you what, what it was like to lose your mind in prison. And yeah. at the same time, Rambo's crazy because he's just gone through this crucifixion. He's gone through all these crazy things. He's kind of schizophrenic. He, he, has, he almost has like blood poisoning. And there's a scene in David Morrell's novel where uh, Rambo kind of comes back to town for a third time and uh, Teasel catches him by a fish reservoir and he goes to, he goes to take some uh, candy out of a candy machine but it turns out to be fish food. He almost eats it. He throws it down to the fish and then uh, we get that classic scene with Teasel. You know like Teasel is... Uh, you know, you're going to get your hands on that car, you're going to get in that car scene. Yeah. And Rambo, for like two or three pages, Rambo's just thinking of different ways he can kill Teasel before, yeah. like, he kind of vanishes into his own head, like, I could snap your neck and throw you over, I could break your arm and twist this and throw you down in a fish, I could do this and this. So, we're kind of doing this, like, little Nightmare on Elm Street kind of thing where we're, we're having Rambo kind of in reality, then out of reality, then in reality, then out of reality, because he's kind of schizophrenic. Yeah. So, it's very, it's very interesting. So, we 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 got like a thirty minute Vietnam trip in there, just like bloody, gory thirty minute Vietnam footage. Yeah. So I got Bud Morizi over in on in Wisconsin. He started sending me dailies. The stuff he sent me was was brilliant. Like, if I had to, if I had to compare it to something. It was like watching a, a German Shepherd getting hit by a car and just panting and watching his ribs cave in and out, bleeding, you know, in the in the mud, in the rain, totally fucking almost dead. And he's just like, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. <laughs> and then he sent me some more footage the other day, and he had like a little clip he did um, where he, he's kind of got like, a house under construction up in another house and he goes flying through the window. <clears throat> he did like a little skit on the side. I saw, I saw that. I think he posted it on Facebook. And he goes through the window and and he, he sits up, he looks at the camera and he goes back down again. I'm like, what the hell? You don't look into the camera. <laughs> don't look into the camera. Yeah. So, and the fuck, boom, boom, boom. He dies through the window, falls on the floor, looks up, looks at the camera and he goes back down again. I'm like, no, don't look at the camera. <laughs> well, it's B-roll. It's B-roll. It's no, not. I dug this out the other day. It wasn't uh, official. Oh, that is nice. This is like a, a kind of a, what was it? An ER, ER hat. Oh, very it's, cool. Like, I've done it. It's a black, or it's black, but trying to have a bit of a Colonel Trout like. 